is joy and peace. Lord, hello, Lord. Please help me to experience the joy you have for me. Please help me to know your joy in my life. I waited in meditation upon my request, thinking about it. And he asked me, what is the definition of joy? So I looked it up in an English dictionary and uh, it says joy, the emotion of great delight. So let me get this going here properly. The emotion of great delight when something exceptionally good happens. Let's look at what the angels announced to the shepherds when Jesus was born. In Luke 2, 9 to 11, we, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. After the shepherds went to Bethlehem and saw, the Christ child, how did they react? Luke 2 again, then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God after all the things that they had heard and seen, for it was as they had been told. They were great. They were full of great joy. And because of something exceptionally good that had just happened, they were all witnesses thereof. What do we read today in 2020 in God's scripture? Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In Matthew eight, uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, Jesus is calling, "Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden." and I will give you rest. I was reading that the child was given for me today, and Jesus was calling me to come to him today in 2020, even as the shepherds were told to go and see the Christ child in Bethlehem so many years ago. Jesus, the child that was given so long ago, was asking me to spend time with him and talk with him. He was telling me that what I was going through now was only temporary, and his joy was still with me. Like the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 1, who turned at the sound of the voice and saw the kingdom, I was to turn from my every day and see him. Psalm 5, but let all those rejoice who put their trust in him. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. 
Am I going to trust him? Am I going to be joyful in this trust? Tough questions to ask oneself. He further encouraged me with Psalm 30, verse 5. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The morning referred to here is not just tomorrow morning, but the dawning of the new day at the end of the age. The new day when we will be forever in his presence, where there is fullness of joy forevermore. Psalm 126.5 Those who sow in tears shall reap a joy. It struck me here that the deeper the sorrow we feel, the greater the joy we will experience. If I didn't care about the lost souls, or about the lost loved ones that I know and care for, I wouldn't experience any joy at all when one of them comes to a saving knowledge of Jesus. But the more I care for them and about them, the more joy I experience when they come to know the Lord as their Savior. I was certainly learning a lot about the joy he has for me. Psalm 32, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. King David also writes in Psalm 43, Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. It is in praise and worship of him that I can experience the greatest joy he has for me. Whether I'm in a group, like at church, or carousel, or just by myself. One day, when I was in the trucking business and driving back to Calgary from Red Deer, Alberta, after spending a day delivering goods, I was singing a gospel chorus or two <laughs> rather loudly in my cab, and it seemed as if suddenly the whole cab was filled with his presence. It was as if Jesus was sitting in the next seat. His presence was so powerful, filling the cab and my heart. It, my heart was just lifted inside me. That was the best drive I've ever had, and I remember that drive to this very day. My prayer this morning was like King David writes in Psalm 51, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Oh, how it hurts not to be able to spend time with my wife of 48 years. To be told I cannot visit her in person. To not be allowed to be with her when I see her and hear her that she's hurting and her health is suffering. You can't be with her to encourage her and uplift her spirits. It's just hurtful. Yet, at this moment, the Lord encourages me. Psalm 126, 
those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Isaiah 12, therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Psalm 51, again, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. I must draw close to the Lord and spend time in his presence. Then will I be able to draw joy from the salvation he has provided for me and for you. Then, as Psalm 51, 8 states, even though we are going through difficult times, we will be able to rejoice and find joy, the joy that he has for us in him. In Isaiah 29, I read once more, the humble will rejoice in the Lord, the needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Then I started to think, first comes suffering, then joy. And I realize that we are not the only ones who would be suffering and then have joy. We're not the only ones, for I read in Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. <sighs> what joy could possibly make the God of the universe die in shame on the cross? Why did Jesus die on the cross? Well, the answer is simple. You and I are his joy. All who believe down through the ages, all over the world, from the first apostles to today in 2020. When Jesus rose from the dead, he became the firstborn among many. These are his joy. Hebrews 11, therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. 1 Corinthians 15, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The first Adam was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, and was the man of and as was the man of dust also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, 
Then shall be brought to pass a saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen and amen. Now, not only are we his joy, but we are also his saints. In 1 Corinthians 1, to the church of God, Paul is writing, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We are called to be saints. A short while ago, I met a fine gentleman named Peter and his wife, Pat. <laughs> I call him Saint Peter. I never knew Saint Peter the Apostle, but I read a lot about him. I know Saint Peter of today, and I really appreciate being able to call a friend Saint Peter. It helps the Bible become more real to me. I know a Saint Peter, just like Peter the Apostle. I'm beginning to understand that my joy comes from a closer relationship with Jesus and from all the fellow believers God has brought into my life. I'm also realizing that with his joy comes his peace. As we enjoy his presence more, our current sufferings slip slowly away. As Arlene's favorite verse says in Isaiah 40, 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not be faint. I am asking you, all that are watching, all that are listening, please, please find the joy he has for you and your life. Now, May the God of all joy and peace make his face to shine upon you and to be with you always. Amen and amen. Should you want to get in touch with me, you can through Home Church Langley on YouTube or by email at dave-arlene, A-R-L-E-N-E, -E, at telus.net. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it.